You're watching PTV. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to PTV Live. I'm Arnie. I'm Doug. I'm Ben. I'm Big Sis. Big Sis. Seriously? Seriously? <laughs> I'm the older sis. I'm the oldest here. You so. know, you break that Kinda down. Like large and big Marge. <laughs> but, but Big Sis, the, what are the initials of Big Sis? Yeah, exactly. I know. Yeah. This is Sherry. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Than... There's yes. so many people already here. Richard, uh, the Arduino guy, uh, thank you for the opening there for I Want My PTV. Uh, also for the Merry Christmas. Richard's been a great support to us. I'll see some of our other support channels. DNG Explorers, oh. I see uh, follow here as well. Miss Wanda. Wanda, cruising for food. Welcome. It is great to see you. Everybody here. Everybody. Everyone here. I see Blaine, Rachel, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Oh, no, great time with us last night during the live stream that we had. We did a Hallmark Channel watch party. What movie did we watch? The Christmas House. That's right. It was The Christmas House. There were two premieres this weekend. Uh, one was a Nashville Christmas Carol. Doug and I haven't yeah. seen that one yet. Yeah. Ben, you saw it? I watched it today. Sher Sherry and I have watched it. Okay, so we'll let you go ahead and handle the uh, review on that when we get to that. Okay. Uh, we've also we also watched the Christmas House this week, so we will be reviewing both those films tonight. But I also want to make sure to acknowledge the fact that this is Thanksgiving week here in the United States. So everyone out there in our village, happy Thanksgiving. You're spending this time with us tonight here on YouTube. Uh, we have uh, several things happening tonight. We have uh, a, an announcement that I'll be running a promo for soon. Uh, we also have another uh, coming soon video, but I'll mention that in a little bit. We're also going to share a little bit of our Christmas forest with you. But first, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. And also, let's go ahead and go on a round of things that we're thankful for, being that this is Thanksgiving week, it just seems appropriate to, to give thanks for various things in our lives. Doug, what are you thankful for? The internet. <laughs> I love the internet. It's I'll not a bad thing to be thankful and for. Half, uh, 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 as one of our friends said, uh, when they are like huffing it at a hotel, or roughing it at a hotel is... No bar for them, and for me is no Wi-Fi. That's yeah. that's rough in that hotel. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, ben, what are you thankful for? Uh, I would say the opportunity to be able to come to and from work, and that I actually actually still have a job. That's that's a wonderful thing because this. The environment we're in right now is not the best, and I'm just very, very fortunate. And uh, I, I feel blessed. Oh, before, before, and we, before we move on, I'm actually just getting ready to put the last sign up on my wall right here behind me that sits behind my tree. Live. I just I'm, I unboxed wow. this yesterday. Oh, from the, I got it out of the attic. Let's get a nice close-up of that one. Nikki and it does light up. Tree farm, a cut above the rest. Was that a Disney store purchase or a House of Mouse purchase? It was a Disney store purchase that Sherry did for me last year. It was kind of like a Christmas present. It was, it was hard to ship. Find. It was in short supply. Yeah, so it was, was hard a click and ship or I, was it at a store? I must say, I like that sign. I actually ordered it and had him ship it to the house. Okay. But yeah, it goes right there sitting behind me. Wonderful. Well, I don't know if you noticed, but the side of the door is the castle. Yes, I did see that. I did see that. Yeah. Uh, I see Richard put a thank, uh, a reason to be thankful here in the stream. Uh, I'm thankful for the ability to highlight my city with a show that's growing on YouTube. Yes, yes. the Orlando guy is growing. It is incredible. He was had. He was struggling to get to a thousand subscribers earlier this year, and then all of a sudden, 
It has started to steamroll, and the algorithm has found his channel. And, oh, good. Uh, so, yeah, it, big things are happening for him. It's making big strides. Congratulations, Richard. It yeah. could not have happened to someone who produces better content. And it's not that I just want to uh, zero in here on the Orlando guy. All of you villagers, if you're thankful for anything, and I'm sure there are plenty of things to be thankful for, please just drop your comment here in the chat stream and we will do our best to highlight as many of them as we can. So uh, there it is. Lothar, I'm thankful that Thanksgiving is over because I'm from Canada. We have it in October. <laughs> over. Now, I have to say I'm thankful like Ben that I do have a job that I can still work at, even though I'm working from home and, you know, miss the school kids terribly. Um, I do have a job. I'm grateful and thankful that my husband still has a job and gets to go in every day and that my kids and immediate family are all healthy. Yeah, I was just <laughs> talking to my mom about that. Our immediate bubble, just mm -hmm. our inner circle of, you know, intimate family members. None of us have been sick or tested positive or whatever. So and that's kind of a feat and, you know, we're just yeah. afraid that would make. And another thing is that throughout this time is that we've been able to make sure our monthly living expenses have been taken care of and we could buy the food we want when we want to. And that is, yeah. that I think is the core foundation that I have been very grateful because we've, I've had, we haven't had that. And then when you, we just turned on the news and you got extremely depressed because you're hearing people on lines and it's like, yeah, I can get what there's I want. Line, uh, there's lines really everywhere. There's lines for COVID testing. There's lines for food. There's lines at uh, the airports for people who are actually braving. A lot of people were to travel. traveling. There were 3 million travelers this weekend from Friday to Sunday. And that just shocks me considering that there are so many warnings out there for people not to gather for Thanksgiving celebrations this year. I mean, we're going to skip one Thanksgiving year. If we can get through this, we'll have multiple Thanksgivings after this. So if we miss one, be thankful that you're still alive. Yeah. Be thankful you're, you're, you're healthy. Stacy Rogers is here saying, please help, help us save Christmas and get PTB to put all 27 trees. <laughs> We still haven't finished what we have. 20 won't cut it for the rest of us. Oh, my gosh. That is a petition that was put together by Candy Mom, for those of you that are not in the know on this. Candy Mom 15 has put together a petition on change.org. Believe me, Doug and I, we never thought that we would be a subject of a change.org petition. <laughs> so true. Hello, Rita. Ah. Uh, Car key, Mike Wheeler, thank you for being here. There's so many people here tonight. Thank you so much for joining us during this Thanksgiving week. It's really great to have you all here. Um, ben, what did you see? Stacy says that it's our own fault for spoiling everybody last year with the 27. Oh. KMN. <laughs> Stop. Well, we uh, have 21 trees and, oh, goodness. All the 24. So, well, <laughs> one of the trees in the forest is directly behind me. That is the the YouTube Christmas card tree. Here, let me zero in on that. There we go. That tree has a few decorations on it. Those are some holdovers from last year of our sponsors. Uh, not sponsors, but our support channels. And... Uh, if you'd like to help us decorate that tree, please go ahead and send us a Christmas card. If one of the moderators that we have could go ahead and drop the address in the chat, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, and so, then beep, yeah. beep, beep, beep. Oh, yeah. Then we also have that beep, tree behind us. Beep, it rotates too. <laughs> there we go. There we go. And it is rotating. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, it is rotating. And yeah, let I'm me go ahead. Lopsided. Yeah, we're going lopsided here. So let me go ahead and just turn this back. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, that is the mouse head tree. That was the tree that was voted on by you, our villagers. You had three choices. I love it in here. Oh, thank you so much. Wanda, cruising for food, thank you so much for dropping that there. 
that is our mailing address, Pepper Tree Villa, 1155-C Arnold Drive, Suite 504, Martinez, California, 94553. Uh, so go ahead and send your Christmas cards there, and we will put them up on the Christmas card There's tree. There's a pickle for that tree, right? Uh, no, there isn't. No, I don't have a pickle tree. The reason why there's not a pickle on the mouse tree is because I don't have a pickle that has mouse ears on it. Otherwise, it would be there. It's a craft project. You find a little thing of mouse ears and you glue it on top of the pickle. Yeah. Huh. So I can do that. Why don't we go ahead <laughs> I and... I know there's uh, small little mouse heads out there. There was a review. Well, we promised a review of a couple films. Ben, let's go ahead and start with the Nashville Christmas Carol on Hallmark that premiered on Saturday night. Okay. Uh, first, I've got to say that I'm not the biggest country music fan by any means. It was kind of force fed to me as a child. My, my, my father weaned us on Hank Williams, Marty Robbins, Eddie Arnold. These are all Jim Reeves. Yeah. Jim Reeves, these old timey country singers. And I never warmed up to the country sound. So for Hallmark to have a movie dedicated to the music industry in Nashville. Hi, Danny. Didn't, didn't necessarily play to me, but I went into it with an open mind. But that's where it ended. It was just a really cheesy film. Uh, as far as adaptations of A Christmas Carol, you, you've seen multiple multiple adaptations over the years and this one was loosely based lo loosely loosely based. based on a christmas carol and i'm gonna put a spoiler alert here they only actually had two of the three ghosts of christmas did they skip the future we we'll skipped the future yeah, oh that would be too scary for hallmark well quite frankly they were still on the past about an hour and 20 minutes into the film, I'm going, you guys better get going because Ooh, you got the ghost to catch up on. <laughs> and see, I have the opposite feeling from it. I agree that it was cheesy, but I much preferred watching that one to watching the the one that we did the live stream on. Oh. Okay, well, just let's let's, let's, well, let's 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 finish this one first. I grew up enjoying the country music yeah. that Dad listened to. Yeah, you also got to go on special trips and do all kinds of special things because you and our brother were eight and six years older than us. Yeah. And by the time Arnie and I came along, Dad was so tired, all he could do is come home, lay on the couch, and watch the news. But that's another story. Stacy <laughs> is saying, wait, what? I missed a movie based on a Christmas Carol. What's it called? A Nashville, Nashville Christmas, Carol. Christmas Carol. Yes. Yeah, it aired. It'll air 17 more times on Hallmark Channel over the I season. I it's very cute. I mean, I wouldn't, you know, give it. I like what Richard's high. saying here. Sherry's not the harbinger of good movies. I'm just kidding. He loves you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, no, I have to say, I wouldn't give it a high rating, but I enjoyed it much more than I did. Let's put it this way. How many gold crowns, you guys? If, what? I would have given it crowns four, four gold crowns out of ten. I'd probably do four and a half. Four and a half, five. Okay. It wasn't so, the worst I've seen them do, but it wasn't, it was but, far from the best. So if just it's mediocre. If it's, Look, yes. if it's on in the background as you're vacuuming, you're not going to miss anything by not concentrating on it. That's all I'll say. I have to say, I did get to, I watched, what, four movies, four Hallmark movies today? Oh, while I was I making, while I was quoting a, yeah. a tree skirt. As a school employee, she has this week off for Thanksgiving. Yep. I don't. I, so I was able to uh, sew and, and, stream the Hallmark channel upstairs. So it was fun. I got so to watch much time built most up wonderful here. time of the year. And um oh you got to watch most wonderful time of the year. Yeah. And then the oh gosh why can't I think of the name of it? Was the one where the uh it's kind of like a modern day Romeo and Juliet where the two families own inns and they're always competing against each other. 
and then are you sure it's not bakeries that are competing yeah, against each other? Or oh, no, they do the same thing with inns. Yeah, it's in. <laughs> Oh, and, and Paul here says, over the weekend, looks like Hallmark was reaching, trying to get a good movie out. Uh, they were absolutely trying. They missed both. And they missed the mark on both. Yeah, yeah. they did. Let's they go ahead. Done. Okay, we'll go ahead we'll and talk about the one from last night, The Christmas yeah. House. Those of us who joined us last night during our watch party know just how much of that movie was kind of disjointed. Very. By the way, by the way, I have a comment here. It says, watch the Christmas house on Hallmark Channel. Listen to our commentary here. What that means is that I had the option underneath the screen last night as we were watching the Christmas house live on our channel. And so we were making comments about the movie as it was going on. Uh, the thing is, is that our initial thoughts about it were somewhat higher than the end result. Uh, ben, what were your thoughts? I thought it was um, a movie that should have focused on one or two stories, but it had like four or five going on at the same time. And it was just too much for a, a Hallmark movie kind of format. It was. It was you kept going back and forth. Yeah. It had too many subplots. And the subplots just for me, did not add up to a complete story. A it was just too disjointed. disjointed. It was disjointed. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. how I felt. In fact, they made it in a hurry to get I it I personally done. think a couple of the stories are just throwaway. Where they could yeah. have really emphasized it and made it actually a bigger deal. But they ended up trivializing it and made it kind of... Uh, and it was kind of <laughs> like... It was kind of sad. Richard says the Christmas house was a house of cards that collapsed on the weight of all the subplots that got resolved in the last 10 minutes. That, and I didn't care about the characters. Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, there yeah were... you, couldn't get, you couldn't get behind any one of the characters. So no, because the they were two, all around. The two sons came back home to put together the Christmas house one last time. The parents always moved everything out of the house and then put in Christmas decorations throughout, inside and out. So yeah. they, who does that? Even at, at Pepper Tree Villa, <laughs> we don't do that. No, we, we build our Christmas. We get rid of end tables and lamps, but that's about yeah. as far as we have ever gone. Yeah, but the movie made uh, was groundbreaking in that it was apparently the first gay couple that was in a Christmas film. Yeah. as one of the subplots, they on were Hallmark on, Very on Hallmark Channel. Yeah, and it was uh, an adoption thing, but that story was just throwaway. It didn't even need to be in the movie. In fact, it, it, it took a, what? It took what about five, ten minutes of the movie? If, if it, that, yeah. it, that. It, and there was there was no point to it. They, there was it, no it, point of those it guys. Focused on their other son, who was the star of a television show that the show apparently was going to be canceled, then not canceled, but he had to work at that. All at the same time, he was kind uh, of pining for his a uh, high school like crush maybe and there was that misunderstanding when they were younger and that he was also into being a musician but he and, turned actor but he was also a magician yeah the magician now, now here's I mean. the thing we we kept going back and forth in time and every time they went back they'd always have vaseline on the camera lens to make sure that we knew <laughs> it was the past um and then there, there was the mom and dad who grew apart and then they got back together so there was so the amount of the three stories of the three pods of the family members was all about the son trying to pine for the high school girl and that home music. but don't forget about the mopey kid who wanted to be a magician the, the musician and, and then both paul, really been, both paul and richard have said the same thing that actress was not the right person for the part no and it, yeah. i think it was andy or addy it was Andy or Addie, the name of the character. Yeah, uh, she was just yeah. really bad. And they were it's trying to that different. ethnicity, but they were not doing a good job of, you know, that, sh you know, he liked, you know, a Latin girl or whatever. It was kind of like they really needed to make it more, not just making tamales. I mean, it looked like I wanted it to be more diverse and they didn't hit that mark. It should have been even more. And then, it's like I said, it was the son had the majority of all the scenes and all the big drama. Then the parents kind of had the next one. And then the poor two guys was like, okay, we did this. They were in it. Another one, they were okay. in it. And that was it. And, and the thing is, is that 
the parents did reconcile, but it was the fastest reconciliation I've ever seen. Even for a Hallmark film, it was as <laughs> if nothing was wrong. And then yeah. since the parents got together in the end, there was really no reason to still sell no, the there house. Wasn't. There at was the no end, reason. I knew, I knew at the very beginning that the one son was going to buy the house. I knew they would get back no, together. I thought it was the other one, the adopting, the adopting No, kid. I didn't. No, I didn't think he would be the one. I knew it would be the the attorney. The, the, uh, the, the yeah, the actor so, dude. So Ben, yeah. how how many of them? Oh, Bill Lisa says I haven't seen any of these movies. They're all on Hallmark. Interesting thing about this little side note: as we were preparing, I uh, have always the chat here on my phone so that I can see what's going on very easily. It's kind of hard to read over here. So when I see something here, I highlight it over here. Anyway, as I pulled it up on my phone, the commercials ran, and we got a commercial on our channel for FriendlyTV.com, which is nice. the app that we have to download where we watch Hallmark. Yep. Support so you can stream it. Some company out there late last year, early last year, created Friendly, but it was only on mobile devices. They never created it for the Apple TV. <laughs> Then late, late last year, early this year, Handsome Justin. It was, it, it could have done a little bit more. It was like, you know, they had the house yeah. as a character. You know, it was like there was a lot going on. And to make such a big deal out of it, it kind of fell flat. Yeah. yeah. They kind of really, so they could have gone there. The horrible fake TV show, Handsome Justice. That's the, the, the star. I actually like that story. The son that was the. No, handsome justice is what it was called. I actually that you know he needed something cheese that he was a, a an act acky thing, but it was a big deal. That was cool. You so know, you're gonna have something silly. Yes, but... Wanda. The yeah. show that he was the star of on his television show was called Handsome, handsome Justice. Handsome Justice. But it, it and was so, and it stunk. But yeah, you, it was bad. Noah here in our stream was thrilled that one of the characters' name it happened to be the mopey kid in the, in the yeah. Movie. His name was Noah as well. <laughs> he wasn't even Latin. I mean, so it was like... Cause there well, was dad may not have been Latin, Doug. Huh? You don't know who his dad was. That's true. She never said so, who his yeah, dad we was. I mean, so, he, he could have been... Yeah, he could have been a mutt. mutt all right, mutt. so anyway, Ben, how many gold crowns do you give the film out of 10? You know, I really wanted to like this movie because it was such a fun concept, but because of the poor execution and the poor story and the characters you just didn't care about, I can only give it three crowns. Sherry? I agree with that. I would give it three. I gave it four crowns myself. Yeah. Three out of ten is not great. No, it's not. It's It was not Ugh. the best. Uh, it was a C minus. Yeah, but you see, even, even with as cheesy as the Nashville Christmas Carol was, it was still just a little bit better than the slop we had to suffer through last night. It could have been so much better. <laughs> they they did not need to fill the house. They didn't need to have the parents have any drama. And then just dealt with the brothers. Two stories of the brothers going back and forth and dealing yeah. with their life. The parents could have been the stable Abels. And you could have just had the brothers kind of do it, one trying to go back, and then the other set of brothers still have that yep. brotherly competition. Richard gave but it, it was just Richard gave it one and a half Orlando's out of five. Uh, <laughs> so that's the equivalent of five uh, uh, three, three crowns yeah, out of ten. McCoy's. Is it McCoy? McCoy. Yeah, McCoy is one of the main founders of the airport. Oh, MCO, yeah. Yeah, the McCoy's. Since it was he was the main care or main person of helping to find the city of Orlando. <laughs> Is the air uh, the Orlando Airport? I never knew. Understand when we were uh, when we bay way the back buy airplane tickets to go to Orlando is MCO until yeah, you Mike, watch his show. Mike is right. right. Last week's movie last choice was movies. way yeah, way way week way better. Oh yeah, those were really however, cool. who's gonna watch everyone this this week? Right, the, Hallmark is doing something. We have new no time here. They, they're doing something new this year that they have not done. They have done five premieres in a row, starting hey, with Hey Steve. Steve. Hey, Steve. They had done five premieres in a row starting Inside with joke. Wednesday yeah. going through to Sunday. But this year, they're announcing it as seven nights of Thanksgiving. And I'm thinking, well, you know, you're starting premieres on Monday, but you just had two previous premieres. Yeah. Maybe, my thought is, 
They didn't want to have the seven nights of Thanksgiving tied to these two terrible films they launched. Quite possible. So, but, but that being said, it's not just the Hallmark Channel. It's Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. It's also doing uh, a right. premiere. So it's two two a night this oh my week. Yeah. God. That's a lot of Hallmark. So, that is a lot of Hallmark. Well, there's one that looks really interesting to me. It's U USS... Is it USS Christmas? I have not heard of that. Is I that on the mystery? I actually looked in. Yeah, it looks see? interesting. I did see that. Yeah. Okay, okay. so let me uh, let me show you this real quick preview here. Hold on. <laughs> Dazzling Nights in Florida. It's coming soon. This is going to be on the Orlando guy. There will be a video released on his. Well, not just a video. It's one of the episodes on his show, the Orlando guy. So go check that out next week. If you have not yet subscribed to the Orlando guy, please do so. He has some great content out there and he's working that on that fun. particular episode uh, as soon as possible. He's hoping to get some more footage, I believe this weekend. And as soon as it's done, uh, he'll be able to throw that into the, the mix of his edit and it'll be great. I'm looking forward to it. And we've got something else coming up in three weeks. Why don't you run that? Here we've got another promo. Hold on, everyone. I'm not sure what happened there. Let me try that again. It seemed to have frozen up. Hold on. Gingerbread, peppermint, chocolate. These are some of the flavors of the season. On Monday night, December 14th, join Pepper Tree Villa and their guests, DNG Explorers, Dinners with Donna, More Sunshine Please, and Rob Fuzz for the Taste of Christmas on PTV Live. You'll love it. Only on PTV. That's right. The taste of Christmas I'm is coming. So looking forward to that. <laughs> the madness. Stop the madness. Oh, man. Uh, we're going to be on Diabetes Watch again. <laughs> the taste of Christmas is coming Monday night, December 14th. And yes, we will have some... <sighs> And yes, Donna, I'm yes. so excited too. Happy <laughs> premiere of Dinners with Donna or Donna Jaraski. Yeah, Donna's never been on she one of our taste episodes. We're really her. excited about so that. Let That's the mayhem ensue. And D&G will be there. Yes, yes. it's going to be exciting. They have an amazing video coming out this Wednesday. So can't watch D&G. So Samantha says she's in her G. She has her pepper tree villain. Her, her little thing that she'll say. <laughs> and then we have Juan to say, can I have the leftovers from that episode? Oh, dear <laughs> Lord. <laughs> oh, Wanda, you no. know, you may wind uh -huh. up with a lot of stuff that's supposed to be going back to Trader Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Doug holds us up a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he does. Uh, okay. So, we have uh, a craft this week that we want to share. And it's not one that all of us are going to be participating in, but Sherry learned how to do another thing this season. And we want to share a little bit of that with you. So why don't you take it away? You want uh, <coughs> excuse me. The finished product. This is, um, yeah, yeah, it's going to be your food. Hey, Rob. Uh, I just, I made one for fall 
and I'm going to do one for Christmas. So I'll show you this is, the this process is, of making. This is a wreath. The one for Christmas, but this is the fall wreath. Oh, wow. It's all curly. Sherry, that's very nice. Got a little sign. Welcome to our home. Yep. And uh, some ribbon. Show the so, side of it to show how poofy it is. It's nice and full. Okay, that's great. Wonderful. So that's so that's for the Thanksgiving season, but you're going to make one for Christmas? I'm making one for Christmas. I mean, I've already made one Christmas one, but that was pretty much stylized. What you need for this is a form. And I'm using a cheater form because it already has pipe cleaners on it. But if you don't, you can get just a regular wire form and put the... The, the funny thing is that the pipe cleaners look like long garlands. strands of garland or yeah. tree branches, almost like they clipped my poor tree back here <laughs> and gave it a haircut and attached the pieces onto the wreath. So you'll need a form, you'll need a form like that. You'll need a roll of what's called deco rib deco mesh. <laughs> Again, We've talked why does about it ad nauseum, <laughs> and she just doesn't want to go there. You need these mesh mesh tubes that I picked up at Michael's. Yeah, she's she's talking Greek to me right now because I have no idea what this. I'll stuff show is. you. I'll show you what they are once I get into making the wreath, and then you'll need two different types of ribbon. Decorative ribbon. Yeah, just any kind of seasonal ribbon that you want. And fans glitter. When I, learned, when I learned to make it, they used. <laughs> Just those things. <laughs> Did anyone alert the local EMT of PTV doing crafts? <laughs> Fortunately, there's no there, hot glue no, this week. No hot glue this there's week. There's no ingesting of fairy herpes. There's very little here that can't be done with just hands and pre-cut ribbon. Now, I'll tell you. <sighs> Richard says we have fill in links in the description. The way I learned how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> the way I learned how to do it, you use just those those objects that I showed you, the ribbon, the deco mesh. But my brothers know me well enough to know that I like to embellish a little bit more than that. So on this one, I'm going to be adding some uh, picks that I got that are just greens with a pine cone and some logs on it and some rustic looking jingle bells. Because that's what Megan wanted. This this wreath is for her. So what you do is you unroll, start unrolling your mesh. Now, has Megan joined us this evening? Because oh, this this is, I have not I don't seen think her so. join tonight. Okay. So what you do is you just unroll it. It's ten inches wide. You just gather the ends together like this, and then you just start on the bottom. Because if you notice, this has two layers on it. Oh, okay, okay. I see both rings. Yeah. yeah. So you start on the bottom. It 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 gives you a a a, a starting point for depth yeah. of the wreath. Yeah. So what you do is you start and you just tie it a couple of times. And it doesn't need to be tight. And then from that point, you get your ruler. Let me put it down here. And you go to ten inches. You want to hold the ruler up so that I can show them. You just gather ten inches like that. Yeah. Just put it in your hand, and where you picked it up, you go to the next one. The next, next twist. The next twist. I twist have it a couple been of times. Already be lost. I would, I would be so challenged doing this. No, you wouldn't. You did cross stitch. Get over it. Okay, let's do this. Put it down another okay. ten inches, and I like to. She likes to balloon it out. Yeah, make I it like puffy. To, yeah. Make it poofy, not puffy. <laughs> poofy. May, may I hold your poofy wreath? Gary Brittany is asking, where can you find the pre-made wreath outlines? You know what? Interesting story. Interesting story. story. <laughs> when, it's always a story. When There's I, always a story with us. When I was learning how to make them, <laughs> exactly, the woman Donna. that I was learning from has an online has a store in south carolina i think it is she sells hers for like nine dollars each with the with these 
the twists on the, them already. The wreaths with the twists. Yeah. Not the whole wreath completed no, for $9, right, but right. the wreath with the twists. Yeah. And I thought, well, you know what? I bet I can find something online. So I went online to look. First <laughs> website that popped up was Michael's. Hold on. Before you go on, uh -huh. we, we have a suggestion for a show on PTV called Crafting with Sherry. <laughs> Not not a bad idea, Stacy. We could do at least once a month episode of Sherry's crafting. Oh, absolutely. Oh man, you guys would you get tired of me. <laughs> and so I went online and the first website that I came up on onto <laughs> Sherry flew to Bangladesh and made that ribbon from scratch just for the episode. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. <laughs> Back to my story. Oh. I um <laughs> put this down. <laughs> so the first web scissors. The, the first website I went to was Michael's. They were clearing these wreaths out for like a dollar forty seven. $1.47, which I thought was great. Well, I went to my local Michaels and found that they only had five of them. And when I got to the counter, I had rewards in my Michaels uh, app. So I ended up only paying 45 cents for each of each of the wreaths. And then I ordered another 20 online so that I can make some to sell for next Christmas. Like we don't have enough in this house as it is. Oh, yes. Yeah. I had fun doing the Mickey Mouse one, though. I have to say that was fun. Yeah, that will be, uh, yeah. Will be, again, you need to watch a video on Wednesday. Mike Wheeler says it's going to be called Sherry's Crafty Corner. <laughs> <laughs> At least I don't keep saying... It's really oh. easy and y'all. By the way, uh, Richard suggested the name of the show for our um, for crafting with Sherry. Uh huh. He he's saying that we should call it crafting with the drunk wench. <laughs> wow, so Pirates of the Caribbean. I'll tell you, <clears throat> if I was drunk, I couldn't do this. No, that's okay, true. Okay, so then we get that to the true. we get to where we started. Okay, and you open them up again. Okay. And just stick another 10 inch piece in there. Okay. There goes the ruler. Twist it up. And then what I do is instead of cutting it, I just go behind the poof up to the next, the next level. Oh, okay. And just pull it straight. Then yeah. Sean says, no lie, that tree could be on fire and Sherry would still be telling that story all time. <laughs> <laughs> then for the top one, I'm going to stop. And then for the top one. What is this? You have to say y'all several times during the show. That makes it authentic. <laughs> yes, Miss Sherry. No, that was. Um, that's a different YouTube channel. That's a channel. different YouTube channel that I just could not stand watching. Hashtag there is some the painful YouTube channels out there. Hashtag <laughs> the poof <laughs> so what is behind the poof so then the top layer is eight inches a generous okay, eight so, inches so 10 10 on the back eight on the top uh-huh can, can you show the wreath what it looks like so far wow that's coming together quickly it they do because I do it this way a lot of people that make them cut these into like seven inch strips and they roll them and Put them in, and I can't. Eat, I can't be bothered with any of that. Yeah, Wanda, you're right. It already does look beautiful. Yeah, it's looking great already. Sherry's magic hands. I, I, she's got a flair for this. There are some things that have have failed. You know, I would love to have one of these hanging on my office door. At work. Oh, I've got the stuff. You just tell me what color you want. I actually decorated my tree in my office me, today. I did it over my lunch down. break. This go ahead. Lights were not. Oh, by the way, Gary, huh? Richard is saying this crafting segment is more engaging than the entire Christmas movie last night. <laughs> oh, we, 
Maybe I we should tell Hallmark. Of, I did a lot of crafting <laughs> during that movie, let me tell you. Well, there was no reason not to. I was sewing together a tree skirt that I quilted today. Okay, this this does this ribbon is shedding a lot like actual burlap. Well, it is burlap. But it's just uh, it's a lightly woven burlap. So it's it is definitely a rustic material. Okay, while you're working on that, let me go ahead and show another video here. We can talk over the video itself. This okay. is going to be uh the PTV kitchen. We have finished decorating most of the trees and things. So I've got the kitchen going. So we'll talk a little bit about that as you're progressing with the wreath and we'll talk Go ahead. to you. Okay. So here we have the PTV kitchen tree. Uh, that is just Starbucks ornaments. We have various things mm -hmm. like little copper pots. Butter. Mm, butter. And uh, yeah, there's a Starbucks red cup. There's because a story everybody about needs that. a tree on top of the refrigerator. Of course. <laughs> We also have greens and decorations on top of our cabinets. Those so, are homemade decorations. Can't see because there you go. And so we've got peppermints. We've got various candies and cookie cutters and cookies that are throughout the greens. Terry also made those peppermint candies above. So uh, that's another one of her. She made the custom cur course, custom curtains. Sherry made the custom curtains. Oh, good night, Bill, Lisa. And then some more a little sign for candy canes. And then we have over on the side, we have a wreath. And then we also have a, a, a little Mickey wall hanging, of course. Can't have Christmas in that in the villa without Mickey. Speaking of Mickey, there he is, the tree topper for the kitchen counter tree, which is more food related and Christmas trains. They kind of fit the, the mood of the Christmas village. This little village is called Noelville. There are 10 buildings in the whole collection. It was sold by Hallmark here throughout the, the teen decade, right? Or was it about 2006, 2007? And uh, they ran for 10 years doing one building every year. And there's the school and the firehouse. Because every kitchen needs a miniature village in it on the countertop. And those little trees are from Department 56 with the peppermints on it. It just seems to fit the village. And then at the top is a house that's not quite part of the village. But uh, we just like the fact that it's a big house. We call it Mr. Burns' house because it's so much bigger than the others. It's kind of like the mansion on the spring on in Springfield from The Simpsons. So and you can see my Vitamix. That's, that's the village. That's cute. It's fun. Okay, so I got done with the top, and then what I do is I just kind of crisscross between the, the top and the bottom for more uh, fullness. Thank you. Yeah, this is such a Megan thing. She wraps all of her Christmas bit, but she wraps all of her Christmas gifts like she is wrapping our textbooks that we had to do in school with brown paper from a garbage yeah. bag. Yeah, that's what Megan has. I like <laughs> vintage wrapping paper and she gets stuff in brown paper and it looks like a school book. So Donna says, I have most of those little village houses and Dean G says they didn't pass the Wanda taste test. <laughs> watch their video on Wednesday. I don't we don't want to give too much away, but watch D and G's video on Wednesday. Yeah. A lot of little in new windows of tonight are gonna happen on Wednesday. D and G at did five o'clock. D and G did their Disney show. They recorded it ahead of time and they're gonna be running it on Wednesday during their regular time. Wednesday night. That's because Derek, who normally is off on Wednesdays, has to work this coming Wednesday. So they chose to do a show. Keep their same broadcast time, but they recorded it in advance. So yep. they will be broadcasting at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on Wednesday. And that's on DNG Explorers. We're pervy to some information, but you'll know all about it. You have to watch the show. We don't yeah. want to give anything it's, it's away. It's going to be a fun time. So with that say, watch DNG's video on Wednesday. You'll know a lot of what's going on from this show. It's a continuation 
um, <laughs> which I think is pretty cool. Sherry, Sherry's question which way she should go. She's it's like she's almost asking me which way she should go. I have no I'm idea. I'm talking out loud. I don't ask you for yeah, advice. Yeah, he would not ask wow. you. Wow. There's no reason for her to ask you. No. No, there really isn't. I'm doing but, fine, by the way. Thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> See? For some of you might know, that's... Can't really see it. Yeah, you can. Cut? What's the cut? Oh, what yeah. Oh, do? there it is. That's what happens when you grab the food processor blender. And you Ooh, go like this. Ow. He grabbed a blade. It's a very sharp, serrated edge. And he actually... Yeah. So this is a Saturday thing. Again, another video this week. We'll so it was not it. it was not a crafting injury. In this case, it was a cooking injury. It was a cooking injury. Those are worse than crafting injuries. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have Donna so says, much to talk oh, about that. <laughs> hashtag appliance injury. <laughs> it was a small kitchen appliance. Let's just say that blade in the food processor is really They're sharp. sharp. Oh, and this is a new one because they had a recall and I happened to find a, a link or a, a thing that says if you had this food process your bar back in the day, um, just let us know. And I filled out this form within like a couple months. I got a new one in and I just pitched the other one. Well, I love this new one, but ooh, it does not like it cuts through flesh. <laughs> too easily yeah so i have been so doug's I'm winding healing. up being the open kid tonight i'm healing what was that ben? uh what was that ben i said with this episode of of the injury with his finger it's like doug's the whoop the mopey kid this evening <laughs> oh i'm trying to mimic the show big bang three jonathan okay. jonathan says i have a scar from an avocado two christmases ago still there in the hand <laughs> Avocado. Well, yeah, when you for those of avocado, who saw me, for those for those of you who saw me trying to prepare tacos and me trying to <laughs> scoop avocado out for the first time and getting the pit out of the avocado, that was that was fun. I I almost got injured myself. You did not. You were perfectly fine. Were you the blade in my hand? No, but you didn't. Yeah. You didn't. You weren't anywhere near the blade. But I felt like the whole time I was there, I was telling the people who was around me, I felt like that early '80s uh, Saturday Night Live episode with Dan Aykroyd and the French Chef with Julia <laughs> Child and blood <laughs> everywhere. That was my Saturday. Oh, I'm sorry, Doug. I didn't know that. Yeah. So how is it coming along so but I was far? Getting a I, lot I'm, of I'm seeing just the wreath on the table. How is it looking so far? Uh, it's here. Let me let, let's pick this up. It's it's oh, looking gone. very cool. It's getting it's very cool. But you have to get to the point where the green twist ties are hidden by all the decoration, right? Yeah. So and I'm that's almost coming. done with oh. this. But <laughs> Sherry had a tourniquet on standby. <laughs> yes, Wanda, I have lots of gloves and band-aids. Oh uh, yeah. 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 You cannot be in their kitchen without being properly outfitted with first aid. Lord knows I would need it. I made sure I was not a biohazard, even though I felt like one. So, where how how, We're almost, how how often do you go around with this ribbon? Do you just run out of ribbon and let it go? Well, or? no, they're good question. Some people, when they get to the end of doing this part, will cut seven inch segments and roll them like I did on this one, and add them in with the decorations. But I'm not going to need those tonight, so okay, I'll have some extra. She already knows this ahead of time. I don't know how you know that. No, what that I've got that I'll have extra? No, that you'll that you won't need to do the little because sport. of the ribbons and things that I've got to put into it. Okay. Meanwhile, I've got burlap. 
all over his lap. Yeah. It's, Burlap on the lap. Yeah. It's like it's shedding on me. Okay. Wheeler says, Arnie. Mike Wheeler says, Donna had a question for Sherry about the ribbon. ribbon. We got oh, oh, there it is. Sherry, how do you know how much ribbon you'll need to make a wreath like that? Um, these come, these rolls come in 10 yard, 10 yard rolls. And that's pretty much what you'll need in, uh, for one wreath. That's a better answer than just a wild guess. And then you need at least. So about one roll is about a wreath. One roll is a wreath. Yeah. If you, if you do it full, full. And then the ribbon that I'm using is um, 25 feet, and you don't use the whole one because I... The decorative ribbon, not, not the ribbon we're Yeah, not the using. mesh. Okay. And then I do uh, uh, oh, we're back. I'm not <laughs> appropriate. Okay. I think this is the last one. Okay. So this seems to be going rather quickly. They do go very quickly. Okay. So like an hour, an hour and a half, kind of when you get so all said and done. Brittany is asking, sorry, I missed it, but what kind of ribbon is it? It this part is called uh deco mesh. And deco, it comes deco mesh. Yeah, deco mesh. You can get it at any craft store. Um the one I'm using is um, uh, 10 inches wide. They have some that's six inches wide for smaller projects. And then you just cut it off. Oh. Hey, right, show and tell. Okay, let me fluff some. Is the ribbon wired or regular? It's This is, this is not wired. It's just a regular burlap. Look. This one's just burlap. Oh, look at that. It really but is. Other, it's just a, a very loose weave. It's very yeah. it's very war-torn ribbon kind of looking. The other yeah. stuff. <laughs> the war-torn kind of way. The other stuff yeah, looks like Yeah, war-torn kind of way. Okay, so oh, that's like With a little material. A lot of, glit, a lot of um, shiny ribbon woven into it. But you won't be using that on this. No. Because yeah. the different that's a, right. a country style ribbon, right? Okay, Whereas, so okay. that's what it looks like so far. Okay, that's looking really good. And then you just you need to do it. Then again what or... you do is I use pieces of ribbon that are like thirty four inches wide because I don't just tuck them in. I make bows with them. But the easiest way to get the um, the points. On the ribbon yeah the fishtail look fishtail pull your two ends together fold it in half and whack and With then just cut from the scissors cut from the fold on an angle on an angle i wouldn't i would not have thought of that you guys didn't know how to catch a fit and then they're both they're yeah. both the tails are identical yeah, I, honestly, I'm I, using two two widths of ribbon here. Yeah, for me that's uh, wow. I that was a concept I just learned. Thank you. I, I know this is like brain surgery to me. Okay, uh, then to make your bow. Like, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. What's called, what I'm gonna do what's called an awareness bow. Oh. An awareness bow? Like the breast cancer awareness bow. Oh, oh. okay. Gotcha. Okay. So they have a loop. <laughs> An awareness bow. Well, that's what they call that's it. That's what they're called, Ben. Okay. Okay. On, ben. And then you just take this loop and bring it up like this. And the trick to these is to make sure that your tail is a little bit longer than the loop. Stop. <laughs> And then you just kind of. Uh, I, ha I have no idea what's going on. So then you just kind of pull it together in the, in the middle. How do you do this kind of stuff? I don't. 
It's not Sherry. hard to do a bow. Donna says, I know that technique, Sherry. You really do your stuff. Hashtag super Sherry. <laughs> so then what you do is you just open up the... We need to have pipe. Donna off for craft time. Yeah, we should. The pipe we cleaner. a lot of things we need to do. <laughs> and just... Wanda says, I'm lost. She makes it look so easy. Yeah. I know. Right, Wanda? So there's the first exactly, one. Exactly, Wanda. Exactly. It's, like a, it's upside down. They're all going to be upside down. Because you just go around and around. And what you do See, is... That's, that's what it looks like. What's inside that wreath? The Me? pattern. Is that a Santa? What's the black? Oh, and the ribbon? Yeah. In the oh, ribbon, it says Merry Christmas. Oh, it says Merry it's, Christmas. It's a wreath with Merry Christmas. Oh, nice. So then what you do is you just it's start. It's not all tacky vintage enough for me, but okay. I think so, <laughs> Megan. I think Ben's loop is longer than his tail. <laughs> You're not far off. So then what I do is I just start alternating all these things, putting them in. Oh, and you got another type of bow. So how many different ribbons do you have? Two. It's being done right in front of me and I'm lost. Donna, I'm just gonna say uh, it. I'm just gonna say it like Edna Mode. No capes. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hashtag Super Sherry saves the day. While she's doing this, let's uh, talk. Let's let's talk about uh, what we have coming up. Thursday is Thanksgiving, and that will be my next episode of Life with Ben. I will be sharing a few things of what I'm thankful for, as well as uh, showcasing something being decorated here in my room. Oh, wonderful. Okay, we have actually also um, a video coming on Wednesday. Doug and I are in the midst of preparing this one right now. What's it called? It's called he Heavenly Jello. It's my great grandmother on my dad's side would make it. I grew up with this lime jello. It's a lime jello that has dissolved cream cheese in it, whipping cream, pistach uh, not pistachios, but walnuts, pineapple, and maraschino cherries. Dissolved cream cheese, yeah. melted cream cheese, melted dissolved. Cream he'll he'll cheese. talk about that, but this is actually oh, it's such an amazing. I love it's Jello. interesting. This is a collaboration video for us. This is one of our first collaborations with a channel that is outside our sphere of our community. We follow, they're called the we Melvin have followed, we have followed this channel since about July of 2016. They are called the Velveteen Lounge Kitchen. Uh, Paul and Kelly uh, do mostly cocktails and mocktails on their channel. They also do some food and things like that. Uh, but yeah, they have um, a channel here that we are working with. And when we're doing it, they're also going to be making a vintage Jello salad. So I'm really looking forward to see what they come up with. Those oh, both nice. videos are dropping Wednesday morning. And uh, Richard has asked that we, I run the promos again right now. So here, let me run his video, his promo right now. Dazzling Lights coming next week on his channel, The Orlando I'm Guy. looking forward to that. I am too. That'll and, be fun. And then I'll go ahead. For those of you that have just joined or have not seen it yet, we have something coming in three weeks. Check this out. Gingerbread, peppermint, chocolate. These are some of the flavors of the season. On Monday night, December 14th, join Pepper Tree Villa and their guests, DNG Explorers, Dinners with Donna, 
More sunshine, please. And Rob Fuzz for the taste of Christmas on PTV Live. You'll love it. Only on PTV. Okay, there we are. And oh, uh, one time. So, wonderful. We're gonna... so the Taste of Christmas is coming Monday, December 14th. And one one last little promo here. I can hear the servers turn on for this. Oh, the server's working. <laughs> Literally, I hear our server. <laughs> Life with Ben, Thursdays only on PTV. Okay, so let's get one final look here at the uh, project for tonight. Oh, hold on. on. Oh, you're putting the in there? Oh, look, at she's already got how many ribbons on that already? 14,000. I do not. <laughs> <coughs> oh, wow. That is kind of cool with all the different ribbons. You're almost done you with that. And so then you put literally putting in the um the pen. and then you put ribbons in um that's just the top row. I've got to go back and put ribbons in the bottom row and, now. And you can see the uh the pick that she's put in here too. Wow, that. That added rustic look. And then I'll tie a bell in the middle of some of these bows, like this. Ben, I don't know how she does this. Donna says, Ben Tyler Moore, the hat toss is priceless. <laughs> I'm going to try something here. What are you going to do? Oh, she's getting creative on the fly. She's adding a jingle bell? Well, jingle bell, but she's uh, trying to put it on the twist tie. Oh, I'm sure. But it's, okay, it's 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 acting a little squirrely here and she's fighting with it, but I, feel I will she's, win. She's going to win. Donna says she feels like making a really yummy ambrosia salad. I make it really <laughs> yummy. We were just talking about how some jello salads have gone out of fashion and we were laughing. We're like, oh, an ambrosia salad is another one that like went away in the early but, to the mid eighties. But, but yeah, be looking for those retro re recipes on Wednesday. Oh my gosh, I have we'll have one here on Pepper Tree Villa and the other one will be on the Velveteen Lounge Kitchen. Uh, there will be a link to this to that uh, channel in the description of our video, so you can actually go check out that video as well. And while you're there, make sure that you subscribe and tell them PTV sent you. Is hopefully in 2021, I'm going to bring out vintage Jello cookbooks. Oh dear Lord! In these, so this is something I kind I have of, some of those. I love Jello, so this is kind of I have so many of these little pamphlet these are from like the 60s so. that's for a new segment we're calling doug's fun with jello <laughs> actually we're thinking about calling the segment old timey kitchen oh my gosh here's another one i got an estate cell that has all the clippings still in it <laughs> so you'll jiggle the fun joy of jello so I Doug, I didn't even realize they have Donna it. says, I have those cookbooks, Doug. Hashtag 20. Oh, cool. So, yeah. <laughs> how old is okay. this? This is how it's coming, Ari. Let me see, Sherry. Oh, my oh, word. That's really Sher nice. And you did that in all of about 40 minutes. Yeah, it, I still it's have that. To... No, I think she started like at 7.30. Yeah, 7.30. 10.30 oh. Eastern. So like half an hour, she's got this beautiful work of art. It's it's like she's working in a sweatshop. <laughs> it's far from it though, because I've got to add. Uh, yeah, she's still got some things to add to it, so it's it's not done yet. Of, but yeah. when it's done, I will take a picture so we can post it to our social media, and everyone will be able to enjoy the finished product. Wonderful. It was, I guess, it was owned by Mrs. Marianne Gizzy. She has an old letter in here from San Francisco. Can I see what that looks like? 
and she printed out another one called a cranberry cream cheese mold. So that sounds so delicious. We, yeah, she lived in Millbrae. Yeah, she lived in Millbrae. So yeah, Mil Millbrae, by the way, is right outside the uh, San Francisco airport. It's the airport. So yeah, we're gonna have some fun with Jello coming up next year on PTV. Okay. Yeah, yeah let's get rid of twenty twenty like first. Mike Wheeler said, "Please keep hot dog Jello salad in the past. Do not." Ew. Hot yeah, dog. Uh, hot dog Jello. Mike, don't mean to disappoint you, but there may be some vintage recipes coming that include uh, suspended hot dogs in gelatin. So or spam. Yep, that might happen too. I want to, well, there's one as a kid my mom would make and my dad loved. It's a lemon jello that had canned beets in it, horseradish, oh. onion juice, um, diced okay. uh, celery in it. And you lost put, me on all of those ingredients. And then you mold it. And at the very end, when it's all gelatinized, you put a thin layer of mayonnaise on it. And my dad would eat it up. It was... It sounds absolutely disgusting. Oh, that's right, that's Donna. Aspic. But it, it, oh, my dad loved it. And my, because his parents or his mom made it and his grandmother made it. And we'd always have it during the holidays. And it just, he's oh, like, I want my beet salad for Christmas. Yeah, so, Tim, Tim has it. Tim has a hand down yeah, right there. Ew. Ew, 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 ew. ew, ew, ew. Okay. Like Alexis Rose. So we, <laughs> and Amy of AJC. Yep. That that about says it, Amy. That's why I, I I love the eighties. <laughs> but you know what you should do is get one of those vintage recipes, make it as it was meant to be made sixty years ago, and then do an update as to how we would make it palatable for the twenty first century. That's how we started doing this kind of thing. There was this channel out there that used to post videos oh, about four years ago called Bethany, Make Bethany it. Making It Modern. And she would do oh. it. So we're going to probably do that same idea, but we'll see what happens. How do you, how do you modernize something that awful? Uh, you update the ingredients and make it tasty. She did one that was just god awful. Yeah, she actually gagged on the show. It was a can <laughs> standing. <laughs> salad thing it was like vile <laughs> and then she goes okay this is what we're gonna do for today and i just like okay and then she just disappeared two two three years ago and i'm like oh, oh we have a you. super chat for 20 bucks from cruising for food for doug's band-aid fund yeah wanda thank you so much for that super thank you, wanda. <laughs> for that's a lot so of them that's thank very you. kind of you <laughs> He went through a lot of that. He went through some hydrogen peroxide and also some Savlon. So and lots uh, of rubber gloves. Yeah. And, and then Wanda, when the we get to see you gloves. next time, you could, uh, you know, you you never got the, you need you need to come and touch my gloves. <laughs> um, Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not going there. We were talking about my gloves. And she Brittany says, my grandmother them. used to make strawberry jello with strawberries, pretzel, whipped cream dish in the summer. It was so delicious. Oh, it, that sounds amazing. That, that sounds actually is that sounds, that sounds amazing. Those ones are good. You've got the sweet and the salty thing going there. Yeah. I would eat that. Yeah, yes. those ones are good. So do we have a final a final product there? No. no it's, it's far from final. She'll be fine-tuning this It'll for probably a couple of days. No, 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 no. It'll be... Let's zero in on that so you can see what that looks like there. What it's looking like. Ah, oh, that that's amazing. It just looks so nice. It's coming. Just need something hanging in the middle too. Do you have like large jingle bells to hang in there no, as well? I don't no, um I don't I don't know that she would want anything like that. That's we'll true. Let's not, not, not make it. It's not quite okay. her thing okay so pretty Sherry, that's where we're for now for but walking us through that i really appreciate that because i'll tell you i would be completely lost with it well you have to you know like i say i just learned how to make these uh last week she just learned how to do these ladies and gentlemen my sister <laughs> and she just whips them out and gives them his gifts yep she doug i've this... got one one that I'm making for you. Yeah. With a vintage looking bell. 
Yeah, I think you kind of showed me that really quickly on Friday when we stopped by. Doug does like yeah. bells. I like yeah. bells. So yours will be all nice and shiny and I can't remember that <laughs> vintage and tacky. Sure. And one that says, and she learned in her sleep. <laughs> no, and I did she not. Learn she'll get in the car and she'll go get the stuff for it that day. Oh, I did. Goodness. I know I you did. did. You huffed it real quick and went down, and you don't really have a Michaels or a Joanne's really close by. You have to get on the freeway and huff it down there. Yep. Yeah. Well, I ordered a lot of the stuff and then went and picked it up so that I wouldn't have to walk around. But even so, I got myself in trouble going to pick up the stuff. So next time I order it like that, I'm not going to go into the store. I'll just do a curbside pickup. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for that craft project tonight. And, that was awesome. Uh, oh my goodness, look at the time. I don't have to clean up a mess and I have glitter all on me, so I don't have to <laughs> immediately in the shower. All the clothes go off in the garage and I run in and take a shower. Well, this was actually a lot of fun tonight. And thank you for joining us for this, our ongoing countdown to Christmas during this season as we're uh, mimicking Hallmark Channel with their countdown to Christmas. Just seems appropriate for us here at Pepper Tree Villa as we uh, celebrate the season. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us tonight. Our moderators, thank you for your help tonight. That has been uh, immensely helpful. Uh, and to our support channels, D&G Explorers, Two Real Geeks, Rob Fuzz, More Sunshine Please, The Orlando Guy, and Fox Hollow. All six channels have been very supportive to us. And thank you, lovely Wanda, for the wonderful super chat. Wanda, channel. thank you for that super chat. That was very sweet of you, Wanda. It'll definitely help us continue to improve our our channel, our videos. I hope uh, it keeps me out of the ER. I don't yeah. want to spend the holidays dead, Clark. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, <laughs> now all of a sudden our phones are buzzing. I'm like, who's doing it? So, yeah, I'm getting some messages from other people that have not been commenting. So, uh, but. I've been getting other comments from other people. So uh, let's just say that people have been amused by your face, Ben. They've really appreciated your reaction. <laughs> to what? I don't know. Anything and everything? Yeah. I'm just me. <laughs> and Stacy's reminding everyone, don't forget, please help us save Christmas. Sign the petition. If we get to 100 names there, you know, it just might happen. I say K M a lot. Kill me. get to vote twice? No, no, no change.org doesn't work that way. Yeah, you can only sign once, Sherry. So there we are. Donna says it all right now. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Yes. Uh, everyone, thank you so much for spending this time with us tonight. We know you have a choice of what you can do on a Monday night. Uh, it's wonderful that uh, you were able to spend that time with us. We really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, one Stay last thing, Ben. Your shirt yeah. there that you're wearing? Let's go yes. in on that. Oh, I got to We got to get Lofi That's back Lofi. In. Lofi is My our mascot, shirt. the snowman. He's a, that T-shirt's available in our shop starting this week. Uh, it will be uploaded before Thanksgiving so that you can make that purchase yourself, a Lofi T-shirt. And it's only during the Christmas season that you can purchase that shirt. So uh, that's I right. Love PTV. That's not up yet. Yeah. It is yeah. not up yet. I Love yeah. PTV. Yeah, someone's uh, slacking on I thought that stuff is up. I know but I need to Doug create a new is creating graphic. a new one. It's going to have Lofi in the middle of a snowflake. I hope so. So he wants to make it so it's like that. But uh, everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight. <laughs> I'm Arnie. I'm Doug. I'm Ben. I'm Sherry. You've been watching PTV Live's Countdown to Christmas. Uh, we really appreciate everything you've done for us tonight. Everyone, have a magical evening and have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. And right now, we're also going to give you some groovy outro music. So I know that there are a couple of villagers that really like it. We'll go ahead and play the music all the way to the end. Everyone, stay safe, have a everybody. Wonderful Thanksgiving, everyone. Good night. Ciao. Good night. Bye.